Have you ever noticed how every time humanity tries to take one giant leap into space, something weird happens? Like probes vanish without a goodbye, rockets break down at the worst possible moment, and those mysterious signals from deep space. What's up with that? It's almost like the universe is pulling a cheeky prank, saying, nice try humans, but stay in your lane. What if, and hear me out, the solar system has its own version of no trespassing signs. Maybe we're not exploring the stars, but living in a cosmic escape room where the exit is always just out of reach. So buckle up. Let's take a fun ride through the strangest, most mind-boggling events in humanity's quest to conquer the final frontier. Welcome to Enigma Files. In 2013, British scientists launched a high-altitude balloon. At an altitude of 25 kilometers, 15.5 miles, where the temperature drops to minus 56 degrees Celsius minus 68.8 degrees Fahrenheit, a collection box was extended to explore the limits of life. This region is considered the starting point of a no-life zone in space. The collection revealed no signs of life, but under a microscope, they found a tiny hair-thin titanium vanadium alloy sphere. When scientists tried to move it, the sphere cracked open like an egg, releasing a fluid composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, the essential elements of life. Could it be a cosmic embryo? Some speculated it might originate from the universe itself. The mystery remains unsolved. At 60 kilometers, 37.3 miles above Earth, Astronauts observe strange energy discharges resembling lightning that extends into space. Initially photographed in 2015, these phenomena were termed red sprites and blue jets. Experts believe they might result from clouds discharging electricity into space, but the mechanism remains unexplained. At 80 kilometers, 49.7 miles, astronauts photographed eerie clouds even though water vapor should not exist at that altitude. NASA's satellite probe in 2007 encountered relentless cosmic dust impacts when attempting to study these clouds. Were they made of cosmic dust? The clouds mysteriously dissipated in 2012. The Karman Line, 100 kilometers, 62.1 miles above Earth, marks the boundary between the atmosphere and outer space. The world's first man-made object to cross it was Germany's V-2 rocket in 1944. The first aircraft to cross it was the US X-15, piloted by Joseph Walker in 1963. Walker became the first person to reach space twice. However, before him, X-15 pilot Robert White reported seeing something strange at 100 kilometers while traveling at 6,100 kilometers per hour, 3,790 miles per hour. Could it have been a supersonic Soviet object? The mystery lingers. In 1981, during its maiden voyage, the Columbia Space Shuttle crossed the Karman Line. As gravity ceased, two astronauts captured the famous Columbia Black Triangle photo. Its resemblance to triangular UFO sightings raises questions. Was it there to observe humanity's new spacefaring capabilities? At around 250 kilometers, 155 miles, astronauts photographed five-star alignments of spherical metallic objects. Experts suggest these could be microscopic debris on the spacecraft's window, yet the precise nature of the objects remains unclear. Some speculate they might even be remnants of space weapons, similar to the copper needles launched by the U.S. in 1961. At 300 kilometers, 186 miles, astronauts witnessed a glowing white snake-like object about 2 meters, 6.5 feet long, twisting and rotating in the vacuum of space. Initially captured on camera in 1991, it reappeared in 2003, observed by seven astronauts. Its self-propelled movements suggest it was not space debris. 
Could it be an unknown form of life? At 400 kilometers, 249 miles, during the Atlantis shuttle mission in 2006, astronauts reported being followed by a glowing triangular formation for 20 minutes. The formation seemed to change shape, and its behavior remains unexplained. NASA downplayed the incident, but the footage has captivated researchers and enthusiasts alike. Space exploration continually reveals phenomena that challenge our understanding. Are these events natural, extraterrestrial, or simply misunderstood? One thing is certain. The mysteries of space are far from being fully unraveled. Following the tragic Columbia disaster, the Discovery mission in 2005 paid extra attention to inspecting the space shuttle's condition. Sure enough, astronauts discovered damage to Discovery's heat shield, similar to what doomed Columbia. To fix it, astronauts conducted a spacewalk and successfully repaired the damage. During the repair, an exterior camera captured something extraordinary, a boomerang-like object moving through space in a seemingly self-propelled manner. Could it be space debris? This mysterious event remains unexplained. Some even speculate that every mission to the International Space Station, ISS, is observed from afar. Russian experts dismiss American concerns, claiming such phenomena are familiar. From the Mir space station to the ISS, Russians have encountered numerous space anomalies. For instance, in 1999, during the space shuttle's first docking with the ISS, Russian experts recorded a bright object circling the station, seemingly observing astronauts during their eight-hour assembly mission. Russians also know about microorganisms in space. Footage from Mir shows mold spreading through station crevices. In 2004, Russian astronauts wiped ISS windows and later found marine plankton under a microscope. How did these organisms reach space? While baffling to Americans, some Russian experts suggest they arrived on cometary material, hinting that life on Earth might originate from cosmic sources. In 2015, Harrison Schmidt, the last man to walk on the moon, reflected on humanity's lunar legacy. Our footprints and tracks will remain for billions of years. However, in 2009, a disturbing set of footprints was photographed by lunar probes. These tracks span tens of kilometers, with each footprint several kilometers wide, suggesting a creature hundreds of kilometers tall. Geologists compared these tracks to formations on Earth, such as California's giant pads, caused by subterranean magma activity. Could similar processes have occurred on the moon? These hollowed out spaces could offer natural shelters for future moon bases, a possibility NASA's Artemis program plans to investigate in 2025. Mars is no stranger to enigmas. In 1984, a 1.93 kilograms 4.25 pounds, meteorite from Mars was discovered in Antarctica, containing structures resembling bacterial fossils. Initially thought to be Martian microorganisms from 16 million years ago, this sparked debates about Mars's potential for life. However, by the 2000s, skepticism grew, with claims that the fossils might be earthly contamination or Martian life forms on a nanoscopic scale. In 2012, Mars surprised scientists again with a 240 kilometers, 149 mile, high water cloud stretching over 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles. Spectral analysis revealed it was made of condensed water vapor. Planetary scientist Tian Long Lee speculated it might have originated from an ice comet impact, suggesting Mars is undergoing seeding that could one day form oceans and ecosystems. Interestingly, Data from the Curiosity rover found Mars' Xenon 129 levels to be 2.5 times higher than Earth's. Since Xenon 129 is a known byproduct of nuclear explosions, this hints at a catastrophic past event, possibly wiping out a Martian civilization. The asteroid belt, located 270 million kilometers, 167 million miles from Earth, hosts countless celestial bodies, 
including Ceres, the largest, with a diameter of 950 kilometers, 590 miles. In 2015, NASA's Dawn probe discovered two strange light spots on Ceres, each about 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles wide, comparable to a city. Closer inspection revealed these were cryovolcanoes, ejecting water ice mixed with salts. The salts acted as antifreeze, creating shiny reflective patches and possibly habitable environments for microorganisms. Unfortunately, Dawn lacked the capability to land on Ceres, leaving its mysteries tantalizingly out of reach. Stay tuned as we explore even more mysteries, from the moon's hollow theories to Mars's enigmatic artifacts and beyond. In 1981, when Voyager passed by Saturn, it took many photos. Later, scientists pieced these photos together and discovered a regular hexagon at Saturn's North Pole, resembling the setting's icon on a smartphone. Various natural theories couldn't explain this phenomenon, and some scientists even questioned if there was an issue with the photos themselves. However, when the Cassini spacecraft later visited Saturn, it also captured the hexagon. It was located in the dark region of Saturn's North Pole, spanning four times the size of Earth. There were straight lines, curves, moving storms, and radio signals triggered by the storms. If you carefully listen, this is quite different from the mystery of Comet P-64. Later, scientists were able to recreate a similar hexagonal pattern in the lab, but with a vortex at its center, which was created using the principle of wide flow. This is different from the situation on Saturn, which has no vortex. Currently, it's suspected that the hexagon might be related to Saturn's own magnetic field. Additionally, the Cassini spacecraft seemed to have been influenced by Saturn's magnetic field. Originally designed to last for only four years, Cassini's fuel lasted much longer than expected. After four years, the fuel was still sufficient, so it continued for another four years, and then another four, lasting a total of 13 years and two months. On September 15th, 2017, Cassini finally ran out of fuel and plunged into Saturn. Some people believe Saturn may have intentionally kept Cassini around to show it something. Before its destruction, Cassini transmitted a photo of a gap in Saturn's rings, as if it had been sliced by a spaceship. Unfortunately, Cassini didn't capture the actual spacecraft. Continuing outward, we reach Uranus, located 2.7 billion kilometers, about 1.7 billion miles away. Uranus is extremely large and can hold 63 Earths inside. It's also the coldest planet in the solar system. Aside from its internally heated core, the outer layers and rings of Uranus are mostly composed of water ice and methane ice, giving it a striking blue appearance. Since geothermal energy doesn't reach the surface, there's an ocean near the core that maintains a comfortable temperature of around 28 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which could potentially support life. Why is Uranus so cold? It's because it's tipped over at an angle of 97.77 degrees. While other planets in the solar system spin like tops, Uranus rotates like a Ferris wheel. This extreme tilt means it has minimal exposure to the sun, making it very cold. This tilt might have been caused by a collision with an enormous unknown object in the early solar system, potentially flipping Uranus over. The impact would have caused drastic environmental changes. Could Uranus be the distant home planet of Nibiru, as described in the ancient Aranaki legends? Could there be hidden Nibiru bases beneath its icy oceans? At the same time, scientists have observed the strongest laser activity in the solar system coming from Uranus, indicating that it's still active. Moreover, Uranus's highly conductive superionic water atmosphere is 50 times thicker than Earth's atmosphere. According to Tesla's planetary generator theory, this vast energy might be transmitted to the subsurface ocean of Uranus for use. Continuing further, we reach Neptune, located 4.2 billion kilometers, about 2.6 billion miles away. In 1989, Voyager 2 discovered Neptune's first moon, which seemed very unusual. 
It orbited Neptune in the opposite direction of the other 12 moons. Scientists initially explained that this could be the result of a massive collision reversing its orbit, but Voyager 2 later found that this moon was perfectly smooth, reflecting 70% of the sun's light, much like a metal ball. This made the collision theory seem less plausible. If it's not made of metal, how did this moon survive a collision without being damaged? It's as if the moon's material is extraordinarily durable. Later, experts proposed the idea that this moon, known as Triton, might have icy volcanoes that eject large amounts of liquid water, which then freezes into ice, gradually smoothing its surface. However, no evidence of these icy volcanoes has been observed yet. Could Triton be a remnant of the same collision that flipped Uranus? Next, we arrive at Pluto, located 5.7 billion kilometers, about 3.5 billion miles away. In 2015, the New Horizons probe reached Pluto and sent back an image of Pluto with a heart-shaped feature. Many people still remember the news from that time. However, just below the heart-shaped region, New Horizons also captured an image of a famous Pluto snail, which looks remarkably like a snail. Even scientists helped fans create CGI animations of the Pluto snail. But with Pluto's thin atmosphere, dim sunlight, and surface temperature of minus 240 degrees Celsius minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, is it really possible for such a giant snail to exist here? Experts later explained that Pluto is likely still active, much like Uranus. Beneath its icy surface, there may be a liquid nitrogen methane sea. Volcanic eruptions of liquid nitrogen could cause cracks in the surface, resembling snail-like tracks. The snail itself might be a result of eruptions of liquid nitrogen and methane ice. Further out, we reach the Kuiper Belt, the home of many comets, located at the edge of the solar system. In 2016, New Horizons entered the Kuiper Belt and quickly discovered a small asteroid that flashes every 5.5 hours. This was very strange, so scientists decided to send a probe to investigate. They named the asteroid around, after the Welsh mythological ruler of the underworld. Further out, we reach the boundary of the sun's domain, the Heliopause, which is surrounded by the Oort Cloud, a region filled with ice and rocks. The sun's solar wind accumulates at the Heliopause, forming a hot hydrogen wall with a thickness of about 2 billion kilometers, 1.2 billion miles. The temperature here can reach 1 to 2 million degrees Celsius, 1.8 to 3.6 million degrees Fahrenheit, much higher than the sun's own 5,500 degrees Celsius 9,932 degrees Fahrenheit. This solar wind produces heat through particle collisions, creating a wall of extreme heat. Any spacecraft attempting to cross the heliopause would be unable to do so beyond this hot wall. The Oort cloud stretches for two light years, about 19 trillion kilometers or 12 trillion miles, with no sunlight and dense with icy asteroids. Crossing this region would require avoiding constant collisions with icy objects, all while being completely cut off from any supplies for two years. So, can we really escape the solar system's prison? Just like how we once thought it was impossible to cross Earth's Van Allen radiation belts, there may be weaknesses in these ice and firewalls. But that's another story, which we'll discuss in our membership channel. This concludes our space story for today. Looking up at the stars, full of mysteries, we are surely not alone. We just haven't broken free from the shell of our solar system yet. Once we break through, we'll enter the magnificent space opera theater. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.